Hi, this is Professor Jan Mei Chen at California State University, Long Beach. In this video lesson, we will be looking at examples where we model with exponential functions. Typically model population growth in radioactive decay through exponential functions. So notice that there are actually two different categories of problems. One is a growth problem, the other one is a decay problem. Look at doubling time and half-life in this lesson as examples of scenarios that can be modeled by exponential functions. In particular, the population growth can be thought of as a doubling time problem, and radioactive decay can be thought of as the half-life problem. Let's start with the doubling time example. For example, under ideal conditions, a certain bacteria population doubles every five hours, with an initial population of a thousand bacteria in a colony. Let's first find a model for the bacteria population after t hours. And do this by investigating what happens to the colony population as t increases. For example, what is the population of the bacteria when t is equal to zero? That is, in the beginning of the time. According to the problem, the initial population of the bacteria is 1,000. You can put 1,000 for n of t, and we're going to denote n of t as the population after t hours. Since the population doubles every 5 hours, that means after Five hours, when t is equal to 5, I should have 1,000 times 2. That is double amount of what I started the previous time. The population is going to double from that point on after another 5 hours, which means when t is equal to 10, I should have 1,000 times the 2 from the previous population, and then multiply by 2 again. You can rewrite this to 1,000 times 2 squared. After another 5 hours, at time equals 15, I should have the population doubled from the previous step, which would then be 1,000 times 2 squared and then times another 2. That can be rewritten into 1,000 times 2 cubed. What do you think the population is going to be? In other words, what is the expression for n of t after the general t hours? come up with the general formula, we often investigate through the patterns that we obtained using specific numbers. First, notice that as we go from one t-value to the next t-value, we always have the form of 1,000 times 2 raised to a power. The question is, what is the correct power? Notice that when t is equal to 5, we have the power of 1. t is equal to 10, the power is 2. t is 15, the power is 3. What would be the correct pattern as I increase the t-value each time? In other words, what is the correct exponent that I should use here according to the current t-value? Notice that 1 is equal to 5 divided by 5, and 2 is equal to 10 divided by 5, and 3 is 15 divided by 5. Notice that on the top, I always have the t-value but on the bottom, it's constantly 5. Based on this patterning, I have, in general, the population of the bacteria after t hours is going to be 1,000 times 2 raised to the power, where the power is the current t value divided by 5. This would be the correct model that models the behavior of this colony population. Hopefully, you're somewhat convinced that, in general, population of a colony can be written as n sub 0 times 2 to the power of t divided by a, where n sub 0 is the initial population, and a is the time it takes to double, which is also called the doubling time. Notice that the space 2 would change to 3, for example, if you know that the population triples after a certain amount of time. It would change to 4, for example, if we know a population quadruples after a certain amount of time. Now that we have a model, let's ask ourselves, how many bacteria are there in the colony after 12 hours? This is essentially asking us to find the n value when t is 12. In other words, we're evaluating n of 12. With the model, we have 1,000 times 2 raised to the 12 over 5. This is 1,000 times 2 raised to the 2.4. 2 raised to the 2.4 is not something that we can do by hand. We have to use a calculator to approximate this result, which comes out to be about 5,278. We remember to attach the correct unit to this. This is the population of the bacteria, which tells you how many bacteria there's going to be in the colony after 12 hours. In part B, we asked to find the output and when given the input, which is 12. In part C here, we can ask kind of the reverse questions. Now, after how many hours will the bacteria count reach 100,000? Well, this is to ask for the t, 
when the in value is given. In other words, it's asking for the input when the output is 100,000. To solve, I'm going to let 100,000 be equal to 1,000 times 2 raised to t over 5. The objective is to isolate t. So first thing I'm going to do is to try to isolate the exponential function 2 to the t over 5 by dividing both sides by 1,000. This then gives me 100 is equal to 2 to the t over 5. Undo the exponential process, I'm going to have to take natural log or log both sides. It really doesn't matter which kind of log you take. Of course, naturally, you will want to take the log of base 2 because that is the exponential function of base 2 that is in question here. But really, you can take any log. Uh, in particular, you can take natural log. Whichever is more convenient for you to compute on the calculator is fine. Let me just demonstrate taking the natural log both sides. So if I do natural log both sides, I get natural log of 100 is equal to the natural log of 2 raised to t over 5. And then bring down the t over 5 to the front, and I have t over 5 times natural log of 2. Notice that natural log 2 is just a constant number. I can then divide it by natural log 2 both sides to reach a natural log of 100 divided by natural log of 2, and that is equal to t over 5. What we need to do now is multiply by 5 both sides, and then my final answer is 5 times natural log of 100 divided by natural log of 2. Now, every calculator should have their natural log key on there, so it's not going to be so difficult to figure out what natural log of 100 over natural log 2 is. So go ahead and calculate that on your calculator, and you should obtain approximation of 33.22. Remember the units, in this case, will be hours. Next, let's look at a half-life example. Polonium has a half-life of 140 days. Suppose that a sample of this substance has a mass of 300 milligrams to start. Let's find a function m of t that models the mass remaining after t days. Then we'll try to investigate the model by figuring out the patterns when we plug in specific numbers. At the beginning of the time, when t is equal to 0, then we have 300 milligrams to start with. After 140 days, the substance is going to reduce its size by half, which means that we're going to have 300 times 1 half remained. I can rewrite this expression using the power of 2, and it becomes 300 times 2 raised to the negative 1. After another 140 days from this point on, which is 280 days from the beginning of the time, it's going to be 300 times 1 half, and half that again. Then it's equal to 300 times 1 half squared. But that is the same as to say it's 1 over 2 squared. Again, to rewrite this into the powers of 2, without using the fraction, I get 300 times 2 to the negative 2. Imagining another 140 days from this point on, which will be 420 days from the beginning of the time, we would then have 300 times 1 half squared and then times another half. Altogether, I have 300 times 1 over 2 cubed. Again, with the powers of 2, I have 300 times 2 raised to the negative 3. Try to see the pattern if you can to see what happens to the powers of the 2 as we increase the number of days. Notice that in general, m of t is always going to look like 300 times 2 raised to a power. How do I actually figure out what this power is? Well, let's look. In the beginning, I have 300, and that is the same as to say it's 300 times 2 raised to the 0, because that's just times 1. 0 is 0, okay, so we have this connection between this 0 and this 0. After 140 days, I have the power becomes negative 1. How do I manipulate this 140 to turn it into this power negative 1? I can think of it negative 1 as 140 divided by 140 and attach a negative sign to it. Then another 140 days, which is at 280 days in the, from the beginning, I have negative 2. How do I get negative 2 from manipulating 280? Well, I can think of negative 2 as 280 divided by 140, and then with a negative sign in front. Finally, I can manipulate a negative 3 by taking 120 divided by 140 with a negative sign in front. In general, the power on the 2 should look like e divided by 140, and with the negative sign in the front. That is my model for this substance. How does this translate to a general half-life situation? In general, the mass remain after t, hours, days, whatever time increment you have, is always going to be the initial amount, m sub 0, times 2 raised to the negative t over h, 
where m sub 0 is the initial mass and h is the half-life. And we define half-life as the time it takes to reduce the original quantity by half. The difference between the half-life model and the doubling time model is exactly the appearance of the negative sign in the model. Everything else is the same. We still have the initial quantity. We still have the diameter of the exponents, either the half-life or the doubling time. We still have the t on the top. Um, if you have a negative sign in the front of the exponent, that means it's a half-life problem, which means you have a rate sort of a decay where you're reducing the quantity by a certain amount each time. If you don't have the negative sign in the front, then you're actually increasing in size over time. And that is a growth problem. Now that we have a model, we can ask how much polonium-210 remains after a year. This is essentially to ask you the n value when t is equal to 365. Remember, we're counting by days. So in this case, I have m of 365, which is equal to, according to our model, 300 times 2 raised to the power negative 365 divided by 140. This is not something you can do by hand. We have to use a calculator to get approximate response, which is about 49.25 milligram. So this says that after a year, we have about 49.24 milligrams of this substance left. Next, we ask how long will it take for the sample to decay to a mass of 200 milligrams. So in this case, we're looking for the t value, which is the input value, to make the output value a 200. Okay, so to set this up, I'm going to do 200 equals to the model 300 times 2 raised to the power negative t over 140. Bring the power down out of the exponents needed to take natural log both sides. Before I do that, though, I'm going to get rid of the 300 in the front. So by dividing both sides by 300, we get 2 thirds is equal to 2 raised to the power negative t over 140. Now I'm ready to take natural log. If I take natural log of left hand side, I get natural log 2 thirds. Natural log of the right hand side gives me negative t over 140 times the natural log of 2. Remember, we're using this property of the, the log to bring this power down. And then just divide it by a natural log to both sides. I get negative t divided by 140 is equal to natural log of 2 thirds divided by the natural log of 2. I get t by itself, all I need to do is multiply both sides by negative 140. Put this in your calculator, it'll come out to be about 81.9. And the unit for this is in days.